Okay, so the family courts offer a really, really interesting spot in the political economy because several lots of things meet here. Now we talked in the playlist Evolution of Systems about the way that systems are joined together and the, the primary function that you see on trial and you are on trial. I don't think anyone that's been in the family courts will actually dispute that. What's on trial there is the basic component of welfare state functioning and that's mothers. I think it's over 90% of care applications are um, made against mothers because they're usually the primary carer. Um, but in the family courts we hear private family law, which is where there are disputes between people within the family unit over where something around the children is contested and that's decided in a courtroom. That's often divorces, custody disputes, but it could also be, you know, Separated parents who want to live apart, want, wants to move, contested medical treatment is often heard there. Um, family courts are the venue for domestic abuse to play out because most domestic abusers can't take it from the partner that they're abusing, that, they, that their partner has the right to and wants this to stop. Most abusers can't even recognise this as abuse. And so the courts are an authority that women are supposed to be able to use to leave abuse. Now the family courts are structured around the Children's Act and the Children's Act is a very very simple piece of legislation. It's so simple that an 11 year old can understand it. And at the centre of it all decision making in the family courts is about children. Children's welfare is paramount. And it also is a system where what is recognised at the heart of every decision, every hearing, is that every action in the family courts is harmful for the child who is subject to these proceedings. So it's recognition that children whose lives are being shaped by proceedings, whether that be private family law or public family law, are being harmed by that in of itself. So this is revolutionary piece of legislation. Now, we also deal with public family law, so that is where we make decisions about sharing parental responsibility with the state. And that's also where we make decisions about children who are about responsibilities to children where the state has parental responsibility, which is worded exactly the same for the state as it is for parents. That's section four of the Children's Act. Now, within the family court, you need a lot of balance of tensions because there are many, many intractable problems. So one of the intractable problems that you have is that if you have a piece of legislation that centers children, and says that all decision making should centre children and that, that legislation is designed to recognise it's the one place where the state, state recognises power relations. So we don't intervene in human power relations that often but here we do because this is children and there are always legal and political responsibilities to the children within this court. So every child subject to a child benefit claim in this country is covered by this courtroom which largely means every mother. Now, within the family courts, they don't have a magic, you know, wand to know what's going on. They're presented with information at the worst possible point. We accept that by the time proceedings have become necessary, things have gone beyond all other, every other chance has been missed to sort stuff. So, within these courtrooms, we know that because the legislation cannot see and the people who are working to the legislation and social workers and guardians are working to the, legis the letter of the law they therefore cannot see an adult identity they cannot make a decision on the basis of an adult identity there is no adult identity that matters in that courtroom the only person whose identity matters in that courtroom is that child and we're looking to create a holistic picture of their identity and attachments because we know that there's heterogeneity of family forms and we know that actually Lots of children, their attachments are, you know, a bit more complicated than a standard old nuclear family. So, within these courtrooms, quite often the decision making is not about what's best. It's about figuring out what's least worst for a child. That's often what's going on here. This is not a place where there are absolutes. You know, when you hear Owen Jones go, oh, we should smack, we should ban smacking, what he's saying is we should make legislation which makes this one act 
enough to punish a parent, but we also know that if you unnecessarily punish a parent for something that hasn't caused that much harm to the child, the act of punishing the parent will harm the child, and this is complicated, complicated stuff. So, but we are aware that within the family cause, because domestic abuse is about power relations within the family unit, that are not about the child often, that are often about another adult, we know that we have a fundamental inability to deal with domestic abuse properly and we know that there is a structural issue which we cannot, it's not tractable, it's not a structural issue there that's because people want to punish domestic abuse victims, it's, tract it's intractable because we need the piece of legislation to do what it does and centre on the child. So we cannot have a family court proceedings where somebody is on trial for domestic abuse against an adult because those courtrooms won't function like that. And the way that they're supposed to work is that within the courtroom there are supposed to be many functions which balance that, who understand that. And these are institutional functions. These are often named in law. So the guardian, used to be the guardian ad litem, now it's Kafka, so the children's guardian, is the voice of the child. They are there to speak for the child and only the child and often to go against parents on the basis of that if the child is old enough sometimes. This is really difficult stuff. Social workers are appointed because they reflect on power dynamics and they can reflect on wider context and they can have a systems analysis. So if the social work function within the court group is represented for that, if the institution which creates the social workers, where the social workers work, has massive institutional pressure, they will come down in that courtroom. They may come because the social worker has less time to reflect or their reports might not be as good quality or they might not even have had the training or time to do something. But if they haven't done that, that plays out here. But it might play out as somebody not being believed and it might play out as great harm being done. All parties need to have legal aid at the very least, or legal counsel, because these courtrooms are closed. Completely closed. Not only are they closed, but confidentiality is a principle which guides these hearings. So anybody who's within these courtrooms cannot then speak about, I had a bad day at court, this happened, that happened, because that's contempt of court. So you need legal aid within these courtrooms. And if you remove legal aid within these courtrooms, which is what we did, because they're closed, you give abusers an arena. And we recognise that in family courtrooms, it's a matter of who can spend what. We know that everything costs money, we know that experts cost money, we know that each hearing might cost, a psychologist might cost £8,000. You know, a drug test might cost another £4,000. You know, a hearing at a time, one solicitor to attend a hearing might cost you 350 quid for a very small hearing. These are very much, we are aware that abuse is about money and we know that when two parties go up against each other in these courtrooms it's very much about who has the most money. And this is another reason that legal aid is essential in those courtrooms. And then when legal aid is withdrawn, what you've essentially got is somebody walking into those courtrooms, especially with domestic abuse victims, which is what happened, where those courts cannot see that abuse and they are put on trial for their own response to it. Now, each of the women, and it is women primarily, you know, who are doing this, who are in that courtroom, they are responsible for managing a number of institutions around their child. So that's education and health and any other professionals that the child might be involved in. So each of those professionals will have a place in that courtroom, whether it be as giving evidence or as part of the investigation. But erosion in these institutions where they haven't done that, where they haven't done their part perfect, per, their part well, that will play out here. And what you have within the family courtrooms is you have a venue where all these tensions have to be present to maintain the balance of the rule of law. And when you start kind of, when institutions become eroded, that plays out here. One of the problems during the family courts was not the family courts crisis was not just that legal aid was withdrawn. It was that legal aid had been eroded over a long, long time. It's that social work functions had been eroded. It's that Kafkas had very, very high levels of sickness and stuff. So their guardians weren't doing what they needed to do. 
On top of that, you have institutional transformation of the court. The Ministry of Justice has just tried to create. I mean, at one point, they merged the civil courts and the family courts a couple of years back without any thought. And just that transfer led to family cases being lost in limbo for a year. Changes to court structures might mean a lack of judicial consistency, so it might mean you don't get the judge from the same hearing, the same case hearing to hearing to hearing. So if you've got abusive partners within that, they can use that. And it's actually all these factors that come together. And what you're talking about is a very complex machine that runs on a balance of tensions, where many of those tensions, due to local authority reform, due to other reform, due to the reflex response and crisis to strip back at these things, They've been eroded for quite a while. And what happened in the family court is that a private courtroom where an inordinate amount of power can be exercised was handed to the people who could afford it. Which meant that within the private family courts in the last eight years, you had women on trial for domestic abuse. You also had women in the public courts, in the public law part of the courts, being put on trial for not acting to deal with abuse. And within those child protection hearings, you have all the other institutions who are coming. So, you know, the bottom line is the mother's responsibility. But if the problem is that the police will not lift an abusive partner, will not act appropriately, they cannot leave, they cannot get access to housing, and they have no income, this is ultimately their responsibility. And I have seen an adoption hearing where it was decided that while it was unfortunate that the police were not doing what they were supposed to do and while nobody else was doing what they were supposed to do, the simple fact was that this woman could not protect these children from this man. And we had decided that these hearings had to be done within six months. So the only way that this could, the outcome could be decided was if she lost her children, which she duly did, all three of them. And she won't see them again. And they won't see her again. So at present we have a major complex kind of system failure around our family courts, but that family court, that system failure indicates system failure in lots of other systems, and nobody can currently see it because we don't have policymakers who are even the tra the turf thing has shown, we don't even have policymakers aware of basic safeguarding. Certainly, when I tried to describe that balance of tensions at the LSE, they looked at me like I was fucking mad. You know think tanks, the law society, they're all the same. They don't know what goes on in these courtrooms. And they don't know that this is their function. And so the rest of this playlist will look at the different institutions that meet in those courtrooms in turn.